how did I get here? I, I got like most places, you know, um, a little bit by fate. I was I was banned from the United States for being HIV positive, and I turned around and I had to change my careers. There were several of them, and I came to work for the OHTN, and here I am. In well, I was in Vancouver. It was. Um, Small city, a lot of silence, a lot of so silence in the queer communities in particular. And it was people dying. I mean, I've, I've been to the wards with people dying and people with dementia and, you know, with their pets and their families around them. And so a very different time. Very, It seems very nostalgic to even talk about it now, but uh, definitely a, a thing for the movies, right? Very different from what it is now. There's no one secret. I'm stubborn and I was very protected by the HIV movement, if not by the queer communities, because we have, a, I think, a lot of HIV phobia. But it was the HIV movement has done a lot for me, given me all kinds of opportunities and breaks in my life um, and taught me how to keep healthy and how to take risks, like going back to work and things like that. So. So a combination between stubbornness and opportunity and, and protection from my peers. For me personally, it feels like a miracle uh, in, in living and being with my partner. Uh, I feel that it is very current as well because we're a zero discordant couples and I'm always saying this is the way of the future. But another part of it feels very anachronistic and very nostalgic because people do not understand what it was like in the 1980s and even the 1990s. So, Part of me feels very current and fresh, and part of me feels um, a bit dated. That is a, that is a difficult question. If, and I do meet people who are newly diagnosed and tell me amazing things. They tell me sometimes they don't care, and it's like having diabetes, and some others tell me that is uh, a fatal, um, it's a fatal diagnosis. And uh, I actually try not to give advice. I try to ask people where they're at and to tell them to be in the moment, that, they're, that tomorrow they'll wake up again and they have to deal with it. So it's more to be present than any kind of advice that I can give. Because some people are 30 years old, some are 16, or some are 55. I, there's no one single advice. <laughs> well, I'm a writer, and so, um, you know, I've been very uh, fortunate to have been published and, and be as successful as you can be when you don't devote all your time to being a writer, and uh, that is my passion. Um, and outside, I'm just as, as uh, vivacious and uh, crazy as I am inside. I've, I've tamed over the years. I'm, I'm much less, you know, crazy than I used to be. but. And, you know, I'm Latino. There's a the bit of a stereotype that is true in me. So watch out. Okay, what made me... The first book was my swan song, So I Was Going to Die, and I wrote, uh, you know, Flesh Wounds and Purple Flowers, which is about, is a metaphor for being covered with KS, which I was from head to toe, and was published by Arsenal Pulp Press, and it did quite well. It was, it was uh, nominated for a regional uh, Commonwealth Prize. Uh, and then I wrote a lot of Gay Erotica, which was published as well, and I've written for a lot of publications and over the years, and now I'm writing more nonfiction and trying to publish my Memoirs, which is called Giving It Raw, 25 Years with Living with AIDS.
it's a dual perspective again when it comes to HIV and aging. I'm just as concerned as anybody else about whether I'm going to have the pension, whether I'm going to have a place to live, whether I'm going to be able to be uh, queer and living with HIV in a nursing home and those kinds of things. But another part of me is so excited about it because I wasn't scheduled to live the second life after, you know, I was about 33 when I was I went into St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver to die. So it's always an amazing thing to be alive and, and to have all these opportunities. So it is dual. Part of, it, part of me probably thinks very conservatively about it and part of me is just joyous that I'm alive every day. It was very scary. It was like, uh, you know, the metaphor of jumping without a net. And the most exciting thing I've done in my life is like uh, being born again, having a number of opportunities, being able to do what I was, you know, trained to do in my in my doctorate, and being able to work with people like me and and with all kinds of communities. Very exciting. The best thing has happened to me. What I do now, starting today, I'm the director of education and training at the OHTN. And part of my portfolio is Universities Without Walls, which is the training of an emerging cadre of cohort of students uh, who are HIV researchers across the country. Well, my my main goal, because I'm a teacher, I was trained as a teacher and that's what I did in Chile before I came here, is always to inspire and connect. And it so happened that Sean Rourke had obtained this particular grant to train HIV researchers or emerging uh, HIV researchers across the country. And it's a perfect opportunity for me because I love building things from scratch and making them explode into marvelous things. And we've been working really well together. We've been very successful over three years. We're entering our fourth year um, with researchers that come from all kinds of disciplines like social studies and uh, health promotion. And um, so we do all kinds of different things, some in person, some online, and uh, we give them opportunities to meet other researchers across the country and uh, to get you know support for their research studies and to stay in the field which is very important this is a shrinking field and although it has a lot of uh, uh, mystique it doesn't have a lot of cachet Well, you're pointing at one of the gaps, which is uh, the lack of research with uh, gay men, bisexual men, and, uh, and all these men who are, you know, bagged under the category MSM, uh, men who have sex with men. Uh, I think that's where we're seeing a, a number of gaps uh, in terms of what could be done uh, about prevention and um, uh, programs for the community. Twenty-five years ago, I would have told myself, I would have been very compassionate with myself and told myself that I was okay, that I was, there was nothing to be embarrassed about or ashamed of, and that um, I could love people without any, any fear.